where are the songs of spring? Ay, where are they? Think not of them. Thou hast thy music too, while barred clouds bloom the, the soft, soft dying day, day, and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue. Then, in a wailful choir, the small gnats mourn among the river sallows, borne aloft, or sinking as the light wind lives or dies, and full-grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourne. Hedge crickets sing, and now, with treble soft, the red breast whistles from a garden croft, and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. In this third and final stanza of the poem, Keats continues to praise autumn, focusing this time on the music of autumn. He starts by talking about the songs of spring, saying, think not of them. This is a rhetorical device, technically known as paralepsis, in which the speaker introduces a topic only to dismiss it. The effect, of course, is that we don't dismiss it in our minds at all. The whole point of paralepsis is actually to emphasise the point it purports to dismiss. So we have the songs of spring clearly in our minds, as Keats goes on to speak of the wailful choir as the small gnats mourn, followed by the bleating of the full-grown and therefore probably soon-to-be-eaten lambs, the chirping of soon-to-die crickets, the rather plain song of the robin, symbol of the coming winter, and the harsh, tuneless twittering of the swallows as they flock together in preparation for migrating to warmer climes. It is by any measure an unfavourable comparison. Keats doesn't enter into a description of the songs of spring, he doesn't need to. Just planting the idea of them in the reader's mind makes it clear that, by comparison, the sounds of autumn are by and large plaintive and reedy. All through this stanza, the positive and negative elements are interfused. The word bloom is another reminder of spring, when flowers bloom, but here it's clouds, not flowers, that bloom. The word soft, too, seems gentle and positive, but it's counterbalanced by dying. And the rosy hue, positive enough in itself, is tempered in the context of the fields of stubble, the dead stalks of wheat left after the harvest. Even the wind is caught between living and dying. It's not that autumn doesn't have its music, its beauty, but there's a melancholy wistfulness to it, brought about by the knowledge that it'll give way to winter and death. There's a tendency quite often for critics to emphasise the positive aspects of the poem, and there's no question but that it is written in praise of autumn and presents it in a positive light. At the same time, though, I feel a large part of the sense of beauty and peace of autumn, as Keats describes it, stems from the fact that it's temporary, a lull between the hot days of summer and the cold days of winter. It's precisely the transience of autumn that makes its beauty so poignant and gives it its special appeal. If we look outside the lines of the poem and consider the broader context of Keats's world, we get a rather similar impression. The poem itself is a kind of oasis in the broadly hostile landscape of Keats's life. During his walks through the countryside, there were, he wrote, two things which filled his thoughts. His love for Fanny Braun, to whom he was formerly engaged but too poor to marry, and his approaching death. Keats's medical training would have left him in little doubt about the outcome of his struggle with tuberculosis, and within 15 months of writing to Autumn, he was dead. In addition to these biographical details, some recent scholars, notably Richard McGrath Turley and Tom Paulin, have sought to emphasise the political landscape, the upheavals of the Peterloo Massacre, the proliferation of government spies, and the exploitation of those who laboured on the land. I wouldn't go as far as they do in reading political messages into the text, but I think some understanding of the biographical and broader social background to the poem does help us to place it in perspective. 
Keats's world was one of tremendous hopes and idealism on the one hand, and a terrible sense of impending doom on the other, and an awareness of that can only enhance our appreciation of the depiction of autumn in this poem. <laughs> 